Luke chapter number one, verse number eight. verse number seven, but they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they both were very old. So this is a story that I'm about to read you about Zachariah. Zachariah is a priest. His job is to be a priest, but it's not like you typically think their priesthood or their job as a priest would call them to do their responsibilities in segments of time. So like a president serves four years, they had divisions of priesthood. And it just so happened that his division was called. Now this is a priest who's responsible to give incense and, and to serve God's house and he actually gets called to to serve. And it's a big deal because when you get called as a priest, if you're not doing and aligning your life the way you're supposed to be, you could end up dying while doing the service. And so it's a, it's a big deal when you get called to serve. And how they call people and how they determine the schedule is, is they cast lots, they gamble. And, and if your number gets pulled, it's, it's your season to, to do the work. And uh, verse number eight, it says, once Zachariah's division was on duty, he was serving as priest before God. He was chosen by Lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you will call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or fermented drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go on before the Lord in the spirit of power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make a ready people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. Two angels, Gabriel and Michael. Michael is the warring angel. Gabriel is the angel that delivers the messages. And God sent his best angel to deliver Gabriel. And now you will be, and, and because he did not believe, the angel said to him, and now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens. Because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <coughs> I want to talk for a few moments of time. When faith becomes formal. In this particular text, it's um, pretty interesting that Luke is the only passage of scripture that records this narrative, uh, Mark doesn't really address this particularly about Zechariah at all, and, and Matthew really gives a long discourse for Jewish people about the Messiah, but he doesn't reference 
Zechariah. John doesn't even give us an identity about the birth of Jesus at all because John's main focus is to talk about the resurrection and how Jesus is a, a God that can do supernatural things. But of course, this is Christmas and uh, most of you that are here would assume that there has to be some type of sermonic expression about the infancy birth of Jesus. But I, I do recognize that before this text even deals with that, it, it sandwiches in this unique passage of scripture about John, who is the cousin of Jesus, who is going to be the forerunner for Jesus that is to come. And the season that we're in is called the season of Advent. And I find it particularly interesting that Florida Hospital has renamed their hospital called Advent Health. Uh, that, that may not sound a, a big deal to many of us, or it just may sound like just a name change, but Advent is about hope or waiting. It is about the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. And I'm not in their marketing department, but I think they did a play on spirituality that they advertised that someday uh, we will have a cure, and someday we will have no cancer, and someday we will have no pain. It, it's, it's really a biblical identity about this advent, about this, this coming king that will remove all sorrow, that will remove all tragedy. And so they parallel it by saying someday. And, and in most particular people's mind, we think of, well, one day they'll discover a cure, or one day they'll discover a, a cure for this. But in actuality, what they're really talking about is one, in my opinion, is one day there will be none of this because the Messiah will crack the sky open and he will redeem the loss and everything that was broken will be restored. And, and it's interesting that we call it Advent. But, but it, you know, even when we think about the birth of Jesus, everything about the birth of Jesus is of seeming about one particular thing. It's, it's only about this thing called hope. The, the only reason why we are uh, coming to church is because we have this hope that one day we will all give our final breath and we will all stand before God. It, it is this hope. That is what the faith is solely based upon. It is based on hope. It is this hope that we have that God will redeem mankind from its wickedness. It is this hope that we have that when people die, we can look with tears in our eyes and say, if they're believers, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It is this hope that we have that lets us know that there is a blessed assurance that we can rest in. It is this hope that keeps us waking up this morning that says that there could be a better day. It is hope that makes us say that I can go to this marriage and make it another week. It is hope that makes us believe that our kids could be better. It is hope that keeps us going. And if you steal hope away, then you've stolen everything away. And Advent is about hope. It's about hope. It is what Dr. Martin Luther King says, we must accept finite disappointment but never lose infinite hope. We, we must accept finite disappointment, but we must have infinite hope. Be long before Reverend Jesse Jackson said, keep hope alive, there was hope in Scripture. It's what the Old Testament, Old Testament patriarchs prayed for, this hope that there's a Messiah that's coming and our hope was in a meager manger. Our hope was in a baby that couldn't help himself. And, 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 and Zachariah, y'all, I know you're wondering where is this going, but Zachariah is a lot like many of us. He, he, he's a priest. He's responsible to go to the temple. He's responsible to do his job. And, and uh, he, he's, he's, he's just a man of God. And, and he's in there giving incense. And his, his wife... Though he's married to a wonderful woman named Elizabeth, and Elizabeth has this 
womb that's barren and it's kind of embarrassing because in their culture if you can have children you are considered cursed or or second class or less than or they sometimes would even say you need to find a better spouse because you couldn't have children and so it was really a rough time and and there was no drug test to let you know uh, if you were pregnant or not there were no doctors to give you an idea on what is blocking your ability to have a, a child and so they would go together and they would hope that one day you would carry a child and they would get together and maybe Elizabeth would start to feel sick and then they would tap her husband and say, Zachariah, I think, I think I'm feeling something. And then they would get excited and they'd wait a couple months and they would see nothing and realize it was false hope. And, and, and then all of a sudden, Zachariah's been trying, and, and really he's been discouraged, but then he, he ends up having to get called to go to work, and he goes into God's house, and he's singing the songs that you're supposed to sing, because that's what we do when faith becomes formal. We, we do what we're ritualistically supposed to do, even though we stopped hoping a long time ago. And, and, and Zachariah's doing what we formally do. You know how you walk in a house, and the older parents say you need to greet everybody there. It's not like you really want to greet everybody but you got to be formal and greet everybody and hey how you doing how you doing and hey how you doing it's not like I really care to do it but I have to do it because it's formal and it's the same thing with Zachariah he went in the temple and he started being formal he started doing the incense thing and then he started offering up prayers for other people because it's possible to pray for other people and not ever pray for yourself and he's throwing up these incense and he's saying God you're amazing he's reading the Psalms about the goodness of God and all the miracles God did in the Old Testament but the crazy thing is, is that Zachariah then gets touched by an angel who says, hey, I know that you've been praying and I know that you've been asking God for something and God's going to do it. And Zachariah looks at him and is like, what are you talking about? He says, well, you're going to have a child. He's like, oh man, you got to be kidding me. I left that hope a long time ago. What do you mean? You were just singing about how great God is. Oh yeah, I know. We just got to do that. Man, I stopped believing in that thing a long time ago. I'm numb to it now. I sing because they asked me to, not because I believe it is true. And I'm just going through the formalities of it. You know, it's Christmas. I got to get up, get dressed in 48 degree weather, drive to the Kingdom Church and do my ritual, go to church. But my hope has been stealing, stolen a long time ago. I stopped believing in a lot of things. Boy, when I grew, when I grew up, I was one that had a lot of hope. And now all of a sudden, I don't have it no more. And Zachariah is... Uh, told that, you know, you're going to have a child, and uh, this child is not going to be the answer. It's going to be a precursor to the answer. So John, the son that you're going to have, is not the answer. He's a precursor to the answer. Sometimes God will give us a precursor to the answer even though it's not the answer we've been looking for, but it's a precursor to let us know if you can stay faithful, I will be faithful to you. And so I will give you a little something just so you can continue on to be faithful to me. But, you know, here's the interesting thing. Even though Zachariah stopped believing, he still kept going to God's house because he made up in his mind, God, I'm going to be faithful to you until I see you be faithful. Let me say, I'm going to keep being faithful to you until I see you be faithful. I, okay, I know you're deep and all. Uh, the Lord is always faithful. Yeah, yeah, he is. But there are times where you're so far in the midst of something that you cannot see his faithfulness. And so you've got to remain faithful until you see him become faithful. And Zachariah's teaching us something that Advent is about this hope and he is to come. And all of a sudden, now the angel says to him, listen, I want you to know you're going to have a son. And he says, oh, man, no, listen, don't play with me, man. I done did this thing a long time and we've been trying and we've been trying to get together. I mean, David and Tamla, man, they did a gospel album. We got together and, and, and they did a love song album and, and we still didn't have no children. And then we went and got Dietrich's love song and it still didn't produce no children and then we thought it was the music and we got Jodeci and it still didn't produce no music. Then we went and got Art Kelly before the children and then it still didn't produce no music and, and we got Drew Hill and it still didn't do nothing and so now we don't know what to do. We went back old school and got Teddy Pendergrass and we still didn't have anything and Zachariah is sitting there saying, listen I, I done did all of that. I done did all the praying. I'm a priest. This is what I do. But even priests stopped believing. 
And isn't it interesting that they put this passage right in front of Jesus' birth to humanize the fact that there is an advent coming and before this advent comes, there's a man who's supposed to prepare the people for the advent but has lost his hope even in the advent. And, and the angel says to him, he says, he says, this is what we're going to do. We're, we're, we're going to let you know that you're going to have a child. And you're going to have it because I gave you a revelation. And this revelation is going to quicken what's been dead in your life. See, you don't need necessarily someone to lay hands on you. Sometimes you just need a word to reawaken what's been dead. And, 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 and Zachariah's sitting there saying, well, listen, man, I, 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 I'm just trying to tell you, Angel Gabriel, I don't know who sent you. I don't know who, I ain't asked for you, I ain't sent for you, but you come for me. But let me tell you something, I ain't trying to go through this no more. And the angel says, since you didn't believe, I'm going to make you have your mouth shut. Because sometimes if you can't believe, you need to keep your mouth shut till you can believe. So, so, so I, I'm, go I'm going to shut your mouth. And I'm going to make sure that you don't say anything. So maybe in 2019, your resolution should be beyond all the other things that you resolute not to do. Should be, if I don't know how it's going to happen, I'm not going to open up my mouth until it happens. Because I don't want you. Maybe the angel did not want Zachariah to talk because he would have stopped what God was doing, even though God had made up his mind to do it, but his mouth would have talked God out of what he was intending to do. And maybe you're killing your own future by the doubt that comes out your own mouth because you stop believing, you stop knowing God is able, and although you sing he's able, you stop believing he's able, and hope slipped you away. But here's what the angel does, which is so profound. It is the most viable part of the text. It is the most interesting part of the text. The angel says to him, what I want you to do Zachariah, is I want you to go back to where you dropped your hope. Go back to the dead womb. Oh, man, you got to be kidding me. I got to go back to the place where I failed. I got to go back to the place where I stopped believing God was able. I got to go back to the place where I thought that God is no longer in the business of doing this. And this is what the angel says. He says, no, 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 no. You're, you're not going to stay here and receive my miracle without first going back to the place where you said I couldn't do it. You're not going to go into your next dimension without going back and acknowledging this was the place where I stopped believing. This was a place where I stopped hoping in God and started just going through the formalities and the motion of it and he says to him Zachariah you now need to go back to the dead womb and speak to it again can you imagine the psychological challenges he's facing right now he's got to go home to his wife and say babe I'm writing because I can't talk when I was in church I got a word that said, even though it looks one way, we need to know that it can be another way. Babe, I, I got to let you know what I heard today. I, I heard something that really shocked me. It, it, was, it was crazy, but I, I've got to believe again in something bigger than my circumstance. Um, and she's like, what are you talking about? And why aren't you talking? I, I, I told the angel that I didn't believe. Why did the angel come to you? Evidently, while I was taking care of God's house, the angel remembered prayers that I said at my house. And the angel came to me before I could even tell him what I needed and told me, I heard you've been praying. 
Oh, wait a minute, you never responded. Just because I didn't respond didn't mean I didn't hear you. It just wasn't the time for me to respond yet, but I heard you. And he sits there and says, well, what, 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 do, you, what do you mean? I, I thought that no, I thought you forgot about that prayer. I didn't forget about it. You just stopped hoping, and I wanted to address you and pull you on the carpet because you were saying that I'm God, but you really didn't believe I was God. And you stopped hoping in me, and I wanted you to go back to where you called it quits. I want you to go back to where you said God cannot do it. And I want you to go back to that place. And he, he says, babe, we got to try it again. Does it work? I don't know, babe. We're going to try. I'm old. I'm old too, babe. But, but the angel said we're we going to have a child. And so we're we going we to believe that God is faithful and we're going to be faithful to do what he's asked us to do even if it didn't produce results the first time see faith is not doing it when it produces results faith is doing it even though it failed you the first time Faith is doing it even though you thought it was going to happen, but you still wait. Can you imagine how crazy you must be to go around and tell everybody that knows that you couldn't have a child that about this time next year, I'm going to have a child. Can you imagine how much audacity you have to have to stand up and say to other people, listen, I know that God closed this door, but God's going to reopen this door. That's what hope does. Hope makes you believe. Even faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Zachariah, go back to where you stop hoping. And I know you're reading about Zachariah, but I, I've got to ask you the question. But where did you stop hoping? Can you text yourself the year? Can you text yourself the month? I know where it was. People used to look at you crazy. They used to say, boy, that boy's a dreamer. That girl, she out there. She got a lot of hope. She got a lot of faith. But over a while, you got robbed and didn't even know you got robbed. Someone broke into your house, stole all your hope, and now when you need it, you can't find it. You don't even remember when it got stolen from you. And if I were to ask you what you're hoping for, all your hope has been stripped from you. I can take your money, you'll get it back. I can take your house, you'll get it back. I can take your car, you'll get it back. But if I take your hope, I've taken everything from you. If I take your hope, I've taken everything from you. That's how people die early. They stop hoping they can live. They stop hoping that they can have a better day. And what Satan wants to do, he don't care about you being alive. He don't care about you going to church. He just wants you to stop hoping. He just wants you to stop believing. He just wants you to go through the motions and lift your hands and do the song and do the dance but go home and say it ain't gonna get no better this is all it's gonna be this is how it always is this is how it's always gonna be and you lost all your hope where where did it get taken from you Zacharias considered one of the upper echelons in his community so hope being stripped doesn't mean economic status because anybody could lose their hope. You could have a million dollars in the bank and still lost all your hope. You could have a house behind a picket fence in a gated community sitting on the water and still lose your hope. It is so many of you that are living this Christian life and you are doubting God. You're just going through the motions. It's just what we do as Christians. You know what? We're just going to keep on doing it. And you got to stay faithful until God proves himself faithful. You got to stay faithful till God proves himself faithful. You got to stay faithful till God God proves himself. I ain't got no job yet, but I got to stay faithful until God shows himself faithful. Where did you drop your hope? Is it the womb that has not conduced? Is it the womb that has not produced life? Is it the purpose that you had that you've given up on? This is what Advent is about. It is not about when. It is not about how. It's about someday it's going to happen. I don't know when. I don't know how. I just know that someday it's 
it is going to happen. How do you know it's going to happen? Because God said it is. And if he said it, then that settles it. I don't have the proof. I don't have the evidence. I don't have the receipts. But that's what hope is. It is what hope is about. It is the ability to wake up every morning knowing that yesterday was bad, but I hope today is a better day. How's your day going? I don't know how it's going to be, but I hope it gets better. That's the power of hope. 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 But when your hope is gone, you go through the formalities. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands. Oh, yeah, 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 I got to do it. <laughs> I got to do it. But you got to stay faithful till you see God is faithful. You got to, Christmas, you, <laughs> you need hope back for Christmas. You need hope back for Christmas. That's what your faith is about. It's, it's about hope. And some of you may be single and you just think, oh, that's it. You know, this is, there ain't no good men out there. There ain't no good women out there. And you let hope die. And hope has slipped away from your soul. It has slipped away from your life. And you have given up on the whole essence on why you're saved. You're saved by hope. You hope that one day you'll stand before the maker. You hope that the grave was empty. You hope that when you go before the master, you will enter. It is all centered around hope and the very thing that is the ingredient to your future is the very thing that most of us have forfeited in this room where did you stop hoping because your feet are important wherever your feet go your feet are important Zachariah even though he did not believe he kept going to God's house my son, in the morning times, because it's cold now, when I have to change him, he starts to shiver. And his teeth start to clap against each other. And he finds it kind of entertaining. But the quickest way to get him to stop shivering is that I found that once you put socks on his feet, it regulates his whole body temperature. And maybe when your faith is low, maybe your feet should be going where your faith could be regulated. Because a lot of times when our body is not regulated because we're facing an abnormal temperature, we end up not taking our feet where they belong. We take our feet everywhere else but where your faith can be regulated. You take it to other people and you say, listen, ah, this ain't going right. Well, maybe what you need to do when things ain't going right is not say anything at all. It is to keep your mouth shut. It is to say, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm just going to keep my hope alive. Because if you can keep hope alive, you can keep your faith alive. If you keep your hope alive, you can keep your faith alive. If you keep your hope alive, you can keep your faith alive. And I want to ask you, you've got to believe in a God bigger than your circumstance. You cannot wait till you have manifestation to believe in manifestation. And he, he gets her pregnant, and they're all celebrating. <coughs> the Lord has removed my shame, she says. You know, that's interesting. Because when she had the child, she said the Lord removed her shame. And naturally, yeah, she has a child. She's able to prove that she is part of a community now. But, you know, in actuality, the Lord had already removed her shame. The Lord removed her shame when Zachariah prayed. 
He didn't answer it right away, but he had begun to remove it when he prayed. And maybe God hasn't given you manifestation, but he's already given you the answer. Maybe God hasn't given you manifestation, but he already gave you the answer. Okay. Y'all worth catching up. I missed a week, so y'all slowed down. I, I, I'm going to come back to you. <coughs> okay. When she had the child, she thanked God for manifestation. God already gave her the answer long before she got the manifestation. All right, I'm going to prove my case. So, so, Glover, she celebrates the child in her hand because for a while her womb was dead and the child in her hand is the removal of shame. But she already had the answer before she had the manifestation. See, what happened was the minute that God told Zachariah that he could have a child, he gave his seed life. See, when Zachariah got with his wife, the answer was already done. That was when the answer happened. It manifested nine months later, but the answer happened when God said yes. And most of you are waiting to celebrate God when you got the baby, but you fail to realize God gave you the answer when he gave you the seed. And that's what the dream is, it's the seed. That's what the hope is, it's the seed. It is not the manifestation of the child, but it is the seed that is the answer. And some of you need to shout on manifestation. But how many of you can shout on a seed this morning? How many of you can bless the Lord for a seed this morning? That God will give me the hope that I've been believing for. That I will not lose hope. That I will not lose faith. That I'll have this advent. So here it is. A miracle has happened for the faithful. Zachariah became a miracle because he was faithful. And his son introduces Jesus into the world. His son is the announcement that God has something else in store. So wherever you dropped your hope, I want you to write down where you dropped it. And then I want you to go pick it up. Wherever you laid it down, go pick it up. My hands are spread.